Uh, right now, it's just me versus the incumbent. Nobody else has entered the race. Um, I just wanted to uh, tell everybody tonight that, um, you know, well, first of all, let me thank everybody for coming here. I know everybody's got busy schedules, and I appreciate from the bottom of my heart this many people showing up who care this much about the city. And quite honestly, that's why I'm running for Huntington Beach City Attorney, because I've seen a number of issues um, with uh, City Hall, but specifically with the attorney's office. And I can tell you, as an attorney and who's currently working in the private sector, there's a remedy for a lot of those problems. So I, as a longtime Huntington Beach resident, in fact, I moved here when I was seven years old, um, am concerned about Huntington Beach and simply want to make it better. The same reason, reason that you're here tonight. Um, I would like to introduce my wife, Kelly. She's here. <laughs> And we have uh, five uh, beautiful children, thanks to my wife, Kelly. Um, and we want to stay here in Huntington Beach. We want to raise our children here in Huntington Beach. We would like them to buy homes in Huntington Beach. We want this to be our home, and we would like to retire here. And this is really fundamentally why I feel compelled to run for city attorney. Just to jump to the second question, because I know I'm short on time, uh, of what do I bring to the table? What are my qualifications? Um, First of all, going back to my uh, legal experience, I worked for the Department of Justice, prosecuting fraud cases on behalf of the US government. I've worked for a, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals as a certified law clerk, worked for a federal judge, worked for the district attorney's office. Um, when I got into private practice, I defended doctors and hospitals, um, defending in civil litigation medical malpractice cases. After getting out of that a couple years, I got into general litigation, which is defending really any kind of case. Fortuitously, and applicable to the Huntington Beach City Attorney's Office, one of my clients is the County of Orange. So we defend the county, bad crosswalk cases, bad intersection cases, trip and falls, slip and falls, these types of things for the county. I also have represented the Orange County Sheriff's Department. So I defend the good men and women in uniform for the county, defending them in excessive force cases and also negligence cases. And I've even represented Tony Rakakis in the case, because we, we do we represent all aspects of the county. I've also represented in large-scale trucking litigation. I've represented private schools in employment law, a whole host of, of, of different clients. But most importantly, I think what you know citizens are concerned about with, it, with regard to the city attorney's office is, what I bring to the table is my experience as a trial attorney defending litigation. Um, I've handled hundreds of cases in my career. I've tried a number of cases. Just last year alone, I tried three cases. And I don't know if there are any attorneys out here, but trying three cases in a year is actually quite a lot. I defensed all of them. And in the, the one that I defensed in November is a $2.5 million property loss case. It was a complete defense. So I have the experience as a defense attorney, as a trial attorney. I can bring that experience to Huntington Beach, which brings me to my first point. One of, the, one of the first, I'm going to talk to you tonight about three things, although I could go on and on and on about issues with the city attorney's office, but I'll pick the, the top three. One is, we currently and have had for a number of years a settlement philosophy to litigation. Our current city attorney, with a staff of six other attorneys and support staff, chooses to settle every single lawsuit, or nearly every single lawsuit that comes to the city, and those are you know, the trip and fall, slip and falls, excessive force cases. And the city attorney has justified it by saying, well, it's cheaper to settle lawsuits because if you pay $50,000, you're avoiding the cost of, of litigation. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you that's absolutely not true. We currently have six attorneys working in the city attorney's office. We're already paying those attorneys. We're either going to pay them to sit there and push paper or we're going to pay them to try cases and defend the city. We already spend $2.3 million a year on our budget to keep the city attorney's office. That does not include the almost, on average, million dollars a year we spend settling cases. The city, the city of Huntington Beach is self-insured up to a million dollars on every single claim. That's a million dollars. If it, you like to say self-insured, that means that's your tax money. Almost a million dollars a year, every single year of your tax money goes to settling cases. That does not need to happen. In 2011, the city attorney went to the city council and asked for $5 million set aside from the general fund for upcoming settlements. I'm telling you, from experience, that does not need to happen. If the city attorney got serious about defending litigation, it could happen overnight, and we would save the taxpayers millions of dollars. 
Since 2005, we have settled 13 excessive force cases for, uh, on behalf of the police department. Literally 13 lawsuits came against the Huntington Beach Police, and on every single one of those cases, the city attorney settled them. Do you know how many cases I've settled for the Orange County Sheriff's Department in my career? None. We defend the Orange County Sheriff's. I want to defend the Huntington Beach Police Department, and not only save their good name and honor, but save you tax money. Since 2005, we've spent $700,000 on those 13 cases against the police department. $700,000 of your money. We do not need to be spending your money to settle lawsuits because the city attorney just simply doesn't want to litigate, doesn't want to defend. I've done it, ladies and gentlemen, I've done it. I've been successful. I know how to do it, and I can bring it to Huntington Beach. I see the one-minute sign, so <laughs> I'll make it a lot brief. Um, the second major issue is giving good legal counsel to the city attorney's office. You, if you follow the city, uh, the ordinances that have been proposed and passed over the past few years, you'll notice that three of them I could cite right now have constitutional issues. One of them is the social host ordinance that was just passed last year. There are some serious issues in there, Fifth Amendment violations, privacy right violations, um, uh, and, and other issues. I'm short on time. But just to prove that they're unconstitutional, we borrowed the Predators Out of the Park Ordinance from Laguna Beach. Guess what happened in Laguna Beach? A federal court struck it down saying that that was unconstitutional. That means ours was unconstitutional. That's why the city council repealed the ordinance. Ladies and gentlemen, it's one of the primary functions of the city attorney to make sure that when the council says, we would like an ordinance to keep sexual predators out of the park and away from small children, that the city attorney goes and does the research and presents an ordinance to the council that is not in conflict with other laws and passes constitutional muster. We don't do that currently. We borrow from Laguna Beach, we borrow from Irvine, we borrow from other cities. The city attorney is not doing her job in making sure that our ordinances that we present to the council pass constitutional muster and are not in conflict with other laws. Last thing, businesses, I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to create a task force in the city attorney's office to make sure that getting business legal reviews is pushed through is the highest priority. I have not, I've talked to dozens and dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of people who have businesses in Huntington Beach, and they say that business, Huntington, Beach, Huntington Beach is the worst business environment for businesses. And it's in large part because the city's attorney's office won't get the job done. I know somebody who works in the planning department, and all he works on is business transactions. He says, Michael, I promise you, I go up to the city attorney's office with a single page memorandum, a single page memorandum with CC and R's that we pulled from our file. All I need is a signature to get this business to work. They take the memorandum and they put it in the inbox. They don't sign it, they sit on it for weeks, if not months. I want to make sure that businesses get their, their work done and I want to put them to work. I would like your support. I'm sorry, I think I went over on time. Uh, thank you for hearing me and I hope I can count on your vote in November. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark Hi, good evening. So I'm the other odd one tonight. I'm not city council. I'm running for the uh, trustee for the Huntington uh, Beach Unified School District, High School District trustee position. Um, I've lived in Huntington Beach 17 years and I've worked here a little bit longer. I retired after 32 years from the Boeing Company here in Huntington Beach. And uh, my last position there was director of program management for Network and Tactical Systems Division. My background is aerospace engineering with an MBA. Uh, some of the things I've done to uh, be active in community and see some of the needs is I'm presently serving on the board of directors of the Visit Huntington Beach um, uh, board. I've served on the Orange County Workforce Investment Board where we looked at at-risk youth and that was a particular emphasis for the Boeing Company as also placing of people. OOC was very helpful in placing of people as we were downsizing at our Huntington Beach and some of our other facilities. I've worked in the Chamber of Commerce. I served on the board for six years and was chairman of the board of the chamber in 2011. And for six years I served on the Industry Professional Advisory Committee to the College of Engineering at Penn State where I was also chair of the uh, committee for the Aerospace Department in 2011 and selected as an outstanding engineering alumni from Penn State that same year. Uh, as you can tell, one of the things we worked at a lot at Penn State was developing what we considered the world-class engineer, the engineer of the future. And from a Boeing perspective, since one of our primary emphasis was in national security and national defense, while other industries might be able to move that world-class engineer out to China 
or to India, we intend to try to make those engineers here in our own country. And these are great, solid jobs. These are the jobs that are not minimum wage jobs. These are the jobs we need our youth to have. So education has always been a real passion of mine. And as I look at how we're working now, what would I do with the, the school board, I can see that we have dedicated trustees, but they really seem out of touch with some of the realities we're seeing today in our schools and then in preparing our youth to go on and be successful in careers. I have two students that are presently in the high school district. And I can tell you that when I go to some of the school board meetings and talk to the administration, they're just unaware of how to implement some of the things they're doing. And of course, one of the things that's right on the agenda right now is, is implementation of Common Core curriculum. And this is an of interest to all of us. How do we do this in a way that truly gives us a world-class student, a student prepared to be uh, successful in college and then as a in a global type of work position? <laughs> So if you say that the standard is just a standard, it's a, a, a cheating bar you reach to, the real emphasis is what is the curriculum we're developing to support a world-class student? And that, I think, is where we're really struggling and we really need to get some people that have, I've worked in industry, I've hired engineers, I've hired other kind of disciplines, and I really have an idea for what we're looking for when we hire people, and I'm concerned that we really need to do something with that curriculum and beef it up. Plus, we really need to have people that are, whose students are in the system now and are seeing where the strengths and weaknesses are. And I think our trustees had students in the system, but probably 20 years ago. And if you look at the demands of technology, as well as the other demands in the workforce today, that we just need to really look at putting new energy, maybe a little bit more excitement into the trustee position. And it's something I think that I'd be able to contribute. So thank you very much. So at this point, we'd like the first number one person. Hi. <laughs> That's how I'm going to fall after the election, too, is number one. So. <laughs> My name is Devin Dwyer. Um, I've lived in Huntington Beach 51 years. I uh, went through all our schools here, um, which half of them are gone now. Wardlow, which was my kindergarten, gone. Labard, gone. Uh, Geesler, gone. And then Edison, which is still around. Um, I own a small business. I'm a contractor, subcontractor, concrete, masonry stone. Also a general contractor. I do some remodels. I uh, do a lot of restaurants. Um, I was on the city council for four years, uh, just uh, two years ago. Prior to that, I was on the planning commission for four years. Janice Mantini was actually my planning commissioner when I was on the council. She did a fantastic job, and uh, I think she'd do a great job on the school board. That's very important. That's kind of our farm team. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm here for a, a couple of reasons. Uh, Matt Harper, who is currently our mayor here in Huntington Beach, is running for assembly, and he will not be seeking a second term as a council member. So that opens up another seat. Uh, I think there's the likelihood that he's going to actually win that uh, assembly seat as well. Um, so I want to make sure that we have three good conservative candidates running for this office. Currently, right now, you have a liberal majority in the council. And right now, they are negotiating contracts. Your council is going over all the pension problems that we have. You've probably heard about We've got a $15 trillion unfunded liability. That rivals our national debt. Fifteen trillion dollars. Huntington Beach is nearly a billion dollars alone. Now, a lot of people say, well, that could be resolved at the state. We can't resolve that at the city level. Well, we may not be able to, but we can help balance the costs. And, and how we can do that is in contract negotiations. We can get the employee to pay more towards their pension. Well, right now, your current council is negotiating. The majority is going to trade raises for them paying more towards the pension. So what's the net on that? Zero. Absolutely nothing. So I'm here to make sure that that stays as one of the points we're here to talk about. So currently, your council, you have a former police officer. You have a, um, a professor who's also on CalPERS. These are all CalPERS, by the way. You have a, a teacher that's CalPERS. So three out of the seven are 
benefiting from the pension system we have now, and, and you're expecting them to vote on your, in your favor as a taxpayer. I don't see that. Our, our council members here, we've got a, a police officer who, or a former police officer who wants to run, who also thinks that the police officers aren't getting quite paid enough. I, uh, I was, just got back from Montana. I was telling uh, a couple police officers there that our police officers make on average $200,000 a year when you include their health benefits and their uh, pension. $200,000 a year. They were ready to pack their bags and come right now. So, and, and you hear about police officers complaining that we don't have enough police officers on the street. Well, of course we don't. We can't afford them. $200,000 a copy, we, we can't put them out there. It's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. We, we can't continue to do business like that. Uh, over 50% of our budget goes to police and fire in Huntington Beach, over 50%. I'm doing a remodel right now over off of uh, Springdale and, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, no, I'm sorry, Graham and Slater. In the track there, you drive down the streets and, and it's just all oh, falling apart and crumbling. And that's because we have no money for infrastructure. I would, when I was on the council, I was fighting so we would spend 15% on, on our infrastructure. 15% and I lost. Police and fire, they don't want to give up that money. They want to keep that money. Now, it, it may sound like I'm, I'm against unions or I'm against pensioners, but the guy that's out there on working and paving the streets and working on your curb and gutter, he, he's making you know, maybe $40,000 a year and, and he hopes to retire with an extra $30,000 a year. And, and he's more likely to get killed than your police officer. That's a statistic. The, the contractor that's out there working on the road is more likely to get killed in his day-to-day -day job than a police officer. So, uh, it sounds like I'm pounding on police officers as well. I, I, I'm pounding on the police officers' union. It, it's, it's gotten ridiculous. They, they spend a lot of money on their candidates. Um, we'll see how much they intend to spend on their candidates this time to make sure that they have a majority so that they can get the contracts that they wish. Right now, uh, in their contract, they get 25% if they've got a rookie in their car. No other city has that. But some pay 5%, and that's typical, actually, Orange County is 5%. We pay 25% more of their wage. Um, we, uh, we, they still have the donut benefit in their contract. I can't believe this. And they're not willing to give it up. They, uh, they will not give that up right now. They're negotiating to keep that benefit in there. What it says is they get 60 hours of paid leave or paid uh, wages for that year if they stay physically fit. So I call it the donut benefit. We're paying to keep them out of the donut shop. That's just ridiculous. So, I, you know, a couple of issues that came up as I was counseling are fireworks. I'm, I'm for fireworks. I'd like to see it on the ballot. I would, I would be in favor of putting it on the ballot. Plastic bags, that came up. I was in favor of, of getting rid of plastic bags. I would put it on the ballot. I'd like to see what you think on it. It, it became a big issue. I've heard a lot about it. So let's put it on the ballot. Let's, let's see whether it survives. If it does, fine. If it doesn't, I'll support that as well. So my name is Devin Dwyer, and, and thank you for your support. Thank you so much. I can have the second. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. My name is Eric Peterson, and before I get up on my soapbox, I just want to thank the people of this forum. Um, I've been involved in local politics for about six years, and it's very refreshing to see people other than the circus barkers. Because there's about 30 people on this side, and there's about 30 people on that side, and they show up to every city council meeting, and they show up to the planning commission, and these people here and the people on the forum are educating themselves, they're getting involved in their community, and it really is a breath of fresh air that, that we have this much involvement um, so quickly. Um, I grew up in Huntington for the most part. My dad was in the Marine Corps, so I did spend a, a couple years back east and a, a little time overseas, but he always wanted to retire in Huntington Beach. and. I would like to retire in Huntington Beach too. This is a great city. Um, what I've done for the community over the past six years is served on the finance board and I've served on the planning commission. I'm currently the chair of the planning commission and also on the design review board. 
And in doing so, a lot of the issues you talk about on the forum come up. A lot of development issues, uh, finance issues, stuff that uh, Devin was just talking about. These are the type of things, that's actually why I got involved in pol local politics. I was a little frustrated with what was going on in the city at the junior guard level, actually. My, my kids were in junior guards, and I wanted to know, hey, why aren't they doing this stuff when I went through this program? You know, they, they're not going to Catalina, they're not doing all this stuff. Come to find out that the city takes all their money and gives them pennies back, where they used to self-manage. So that put me to the finance board. Actually, Devin Dwarak appointed me to that board. And we got into union contracts and, and uh, greenhouse, or green, evergreen contracts and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, I was a little disappointed that I wasn't hearing it. There was no forum like this. So I actually ran for office just to sort of get it out there, just to talk about it. You know, not thinking I'm gonna win or anything. Just, just get it in the public conversation. Sort of like what you've done here. And uh, it worked out for me. Uh, I got put on the planning commission. I didn't want to go on the planning commission. <laughs> I thought planning commission was, um, okay, that's where the developers go and everything. But it has opened my eyes to the city and what we do development-wise and what our plans are and what the future plans are. I'm currently on the... Uh, the general plan advisory committee so a lot of you have, have on the forum have, have talked about this so um, you know I, I get to see what's going on and then things come up like plastic bags that just that's just crazy why are four people telling us that we can't have plastic bags why are they telling us we're not responsible enough to have fireworks why are they telling pet shops that you can't sell dogs because it might come from a puppy mill. Personally, I adopt dogs, but maybe someone wants to go to a pet store. So, I think that people are generally responsible and generally good. And I believe that, and I don't think we need to regulate people like our current city council is doing. I think we need to contra contract or focus on what the city's responsible for. And that's provide public safety, and maintain the infrastructure and do it within a good budget. If you can do those two things, well, how do we do those two things? We, we, we have to have economic development. We have to bring in solid jobs like Boeing. We, we can't build a strip mall and put four stories of apartments above it and say those jobs are going to pay for those people to live in the apartments because working at AT&T or Java Juice isn't going to do that. But if we did have some development with that will bring in some anchor companies that will bring in those those minimum or uh, middle class to middle upper class jobs, then we have some economic stability. We have some people putting in buying bigger things, buying nicer homes. Our home values go up. You know, if we have a good solid business base in Huntington Beach. So that's what I want. I want to support the businesses. I don't want to find the businesses. I want so to support good development. Uh, you know, look at, look at some of the redevelopment that's done down on Beach and Adams, that shopping center. It's gorgeous. You know, those are, those are people that got together. Uh, there's about four owners in that property. And they came up and they made a great place. Um, there's a lot we can do in Huntington Beach. And it's places like this where people get together where we're hearing we're hearing what you're saying. And I would love to have this forum keep growing and whether I get elected or, or not, keep the fire to the politicians' feet. You know, tell them what you want. And by the way, if you, if you like what you hear, or you want to hear more, donate to the candidates. Donate to our campaigns. There's a few ways to win. Get big money from special interests or you do a grassroots. Mine's more grassroots. I'd love to have meet and greets. I would love to talk to your friends. I don't care if it's five people. And 10 bucks is just fine to give me. So thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Barbara Neal Glaze. And let me all help you on how to pronounce that. It's like the glaze on a donut. I tell you that because I'm a realtor, and um, many of you know that, but if you don't, 
good thing about being a realtor is you don't really care what they call you as long as they call, right? So, um, I'm proud to stand before you this evening. I'm thrilled that you're all here. Uh, the community forum has uh, let a lot of people express their frustration with what's going on here in the city. I'd like to give you a little background about myself. Um, I moved to the city, uh, the community about, oh my goodness, I can't even believe this, 1974. My husband and I rented a little house downtown and I had an 18-month-old baby. And um, for those of you who don't know, I, I grew up back east and moved out here when I was a freshman in high school. And Saturday will actually be my 47th year here. So I'm, I've got a couple of things to celebrate this week. Um, I give you that little background because when I moved to Huntington Beach, I still walked downtown to do some grocery shopping and a shoe man and actually use the community clinic. And I was fortunate to buy my first house and um, never looked back since then. And out of the buying that first house, I became an advocate for the city that I live in. Um, when you're a realtor, you talk about your community a lot. You invest in your community. Why? Because your clients do. They want good schools, they want good businesses, and they want good roads. So fortunately for me in my career, I had a couple of mentors, and looking around this room, I can tell you, uh, we used to have our meetings here in this room 20-some years ago. We used to have a stage, and the people before me shared a lot of the good reasons why it's so good and important to live in Huntington Beach. So I got involved in my state association, the California Association of Realtors, and that was probably my first phase of understanding how politics really reflects and impacts the city that you live in. All politics is local. Do you know that the city council really probably has more impact on your life on a daily basis than state or national politics? People need to pay attention. And you know what? That's what's going on right now. People are upset because of some of the recent decisions in the last couple of years. So I got involved. I was appointed to serve on an infrastructure committee 12 years ago. And 12 years ago, after serving for two years, we met once a month. We made a, uh, a findings to the council. And you know, two years is a long time to serve on something like that. I learned an awful lot, actually more than I really wanted to. Because remember, as a realtor, you have to disclose what you know. And to Devin's point, we do have a lot of, a lot of unfunded things that need to be taken care of. Long term, the council needs to focus on long term planning, such as our roads, our walls, things like that falling down. So one of the uh, things that came up recently in the last couple of years is a community uh, that was being built. And one of the reasons I was so for it is because the builder, the developer, was going to put in a pumping station, seven million dollars, and it was going to take approximately seven thousand homes off uh, requiring to pay flood insurance. But for those people who own homes, that's a lot of money, and it's an important investment in the community. So, for those of you who have lived here a very long time, most of the roads, the sidewalks, the walls were built by the developers. We don't have that luxury anymore. We're built out. So one thing led to another, and I served in another committee. I got involved at the chamber because the business community is really what makes the city rock and roll. If you want good public safety, if you want infrastructure, if you want businesses to stay here, we have to make it better for them. Right? Because if we have good business, we have good sales revenue, taxes and things, that's how we get our roads fixed. That's how we get a lot of this stuff taken care of. That's how police get new police cars, new technology. One of the exciting things that's happening right now that may come to pass is that Edison is interested in selling off to the cities their light, their light fixtures. Do you know in our city, for our city uh, to maintain those light fixtures now, we have to pay somebody every four years to go replace those lights. With the new technology, with LED lighting, we can make that now go 20 years out. And if we own those light poles, 
we can actually improve the wireless connectability of our city. How great would it be that we became the first city to open, offer wireless Wi-Fi in places where you could do business? People aren't just doing business in, in offices anymore. They're doing them in their cars. They're doing it at Starbucks. They're doing it at places all over the place. It's a way for them to connect with people who want their business. And um, gosh, I didn't realize the time went so fast. But um, what I'm really passionate about is keeping businesses here in our community. Our, our city has made it very, very difficult for people to want to come here. Why? Because they want certainty. If you're trying to invest millions of dollars in wanting to bring your business here, you want certainty that you can build a building and make your business run and not run out of money before you've opened your business. So I'm really passionate about that because I want good things to happen in the city. We need economic development. We need to take care of our infrastructure because if you don't, your values will be impacted. And then people are going to want to move here and they're going to want to buy a house and they're going to be impacted by schools. So we need to support our public safety, we need to improve our infrastructure, and we definitely need to go out and do a better business, uh, businesses that are here and keep the ones that are here and ask them what we need to do to keep them to stay and ask other ones to come. Thank you, thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you for letting your opinions be known. Uh, not only vote for me, but vote for the people who think speak for you in November. My name again is Barbara Dunway. My name is Mike Posey. I've um, lived in Huntington Beach since 1999. Jeannie and I bought a house on Main Street uh, so we can be close to the beach, close to downtown, close to the bars and restaurants, and um, I've been here since 1999. What I'm involved in now is I'm currently a planning commissioner for the city of Huntington Beach, reviewing land use issues, conditional use permits, and uh, making progress with economic development. We need economic development in the city of Huntington Beach. We need the revenue to pay for infrastructure, public safety, uh, the things that we all want. One of the things that uh, I would like to do as city council is make sure that we have the businesses that are here, attract the jobs that are here, and the jobs that we have keep the jobs that are here. I had a business here in Huntington Beach for 10 years. We had employees. Um, never once I was reached out by the city, city council. Uh, there were some hurdles to overcome. Uh, we had to overcome them ourselves. I think that City Council should be reaching out to the business community and making sure that uh, it's easy to do business with the City of Huntington Beach. Um, the other thing that I will bring to the City Council is I don't have any pet projects to bring. I'm not interested in banning plastic bags, not interested in banning fireworks. Those things should be on the ballot and let the voters decide. Uh, same goes for microchipping pets and banning pets. We think that Huntington Beach is an island and we're not. We're surrounded by cities all the way around. Those cities sell fireworks, those cities sell plastic bags, those cities sell pets. Um, I think by and large, some of the other candidates said that we are a good group of people that live in Huntington Beach. We're responsible, we're grown-ups. We know what to do with plastic bags, fireworks, and pets. That should be up to the voters to decide. Let us be grown-ups. Um, I'm not a career politician. I don't have aspirations to go into higher office. I just want to serve the city of Huntington Beach and don't have a business to advance in Huntington Beach. I just want to serve my city. I want to serve you. I want your vote. I want to earn your vote. And uh, that's about all I've got to say. Hi, my name is Mark Mixby and I'm running for City Council. I've lived in Huntington Beach for the past 15 years with my wife, Julie. Um, stand up and be recognized. Uh, we live uh, in the Los uh, neighborhoods near Slater and Graham, and that was actually how I got my involvement in city issues was through Los In 2001, a flyer from the Land Trust, the Los Land Trust, landed on my doorstep saying, please attend a community meeting to discuss the future of the Shea Parkside property. And at the time, I didn't know anything about wetlands or city government or, or anything at all. I had never participated. 
But I looked at the flyer and said, hmm, what's the worst that could happen? Um, had I known what the worst that could happen was, I should have burned the flyer and, and never took the meeting. But uh, here I am today, and I'm running for city council as a result. Um, and going through a decade of fighting in the Bolsa Chica trenches, after you attend so many planning commission hearings and city council hearings and coastal commission hearings, it becomes apparent that really crappy data gets submitted to the record uh, for a lot of these major projects, and it becomes really apparent that the decision makers are not doing their homework and that they just don't care what the law says that, on how you have to process a decision. And after seeing that time after time after time again, you reach the conclusion where you go, I can do it better than they can. I need to be up at the front of the room making the decisions. And so it was the outgrowth of that that led me to ramp up my involvement in, in city issues. I participated in a city council uh, campaign finance subcommittee to try and improve transparency and prevent conflict of interest. I served on the charter revision uh, committee in 2009-2010 tasked with rewriting the city's charter, which serves as our constitution, essentially. And then I've been serving on planning commission since 2011. And the way I like to describe planning commission is that if the workload doesn't kill you, it makes you smarter. Um, I know exactly how all the laws in the city fit together. I know exactly all the games that are played when people want to try and slide bad projects through. And I'm not afraid of saying no against a bad project. Because for me, it's important that we balance a vibrant economy with good quality of life. Both of those things are intimately related. If we have one, of course, it's the other. Um, we can't all sell trinkets to tourists. So I want to make sure we have a diversified economy. I'm currently serving on the General Plan Advisory Committee uh, through that whole General Plan update process. And I would like to see our Gother Industrial Corridor revitalized to keep those manufacturing businesses, to keep those commercial jobs, because I think it would be a mistake if we converted that area over into retail or more uh, lighter commercial. We need to keep those good, strong, converged jobs in Huntington Beach. Um, on the quality of life side, we need to continue executing on the Beach Edinger specific plan. Um, that's the most frequent question I get as I've had my campaign events around the city, is what's all that stuff going up on Edinger? Um, I drive on the same streets that you do, I sit in the same traffic that you do, so I get it. It's a work in progress, and the city is actually going to be reevaluating the success of that plan. And if we need to make changes, we'll make changes. It's been amazingly successful at spurring new business investment in those corridors. I'd like to see the plan continue, but make sure we execute strongly to keep that quality of life going. Um, open space is incredibly important in this town. I got in through the natural open space at, at Bolsa Chica. I've been very protective of Central Park as well. As we're building into a more dense city, it's critical that for these large projects, we need to be having on-site open space, because all too often the city will let the developer do what is called pay an in loop fee to um, put open space somewhere else. I think that's a mistake. We need to be doing open space on these big projects that have the land to give up open space. Um, that, in a nutshell, is where I'm going. There's a few other fundamental good government things that I want to address if elected to city council. A lot of you on the forum, a very common refrain that I see posted is, oh my gosh, I didn't know the city was about to do this. Well, most things like that start possibly years before at lower levels of the city. There's a lot of things the city could be doing in, in publishing more agendas, making it easier for people to stay in touch with, with what is going on at City Hall, and that would be a, a priority for me if elected, is to increase that level of transparency so we can improve the amount of community engagement, because that's what really makes Huntington Beach great as a city, is the strong community involvement we have. It's critically important for all of you to pay attention to what goes on at City Hall, and by attending a meeting like this meeting, you're taking a, a very important first step. I want to thank you for, for coming. If you'd like what I've said or any other candidate said, we, we need your financial support, we need your volunteer support, and we, we need your votes. 
I'm available to schedule any meet and greets at birthday parties, weddings, and more okay. <laughs> Uh, good evening everyone, my name is Billy O'Connell and I'd just like to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in New York City and I was raised in Ireland. When I was 17 years of age I came back to New York. I worked three jobs to pay my way through college. I graduated St. Francis College in Brooklyn with a degree in accounting. I love this country and this is why I want to serve you. For the last 24 years I've been involved in the community. I've lived in our city for over 20 years. I've been a law enforcement officer, and I'm not ashamed of that. I'm proud to have served my community, and in no way would I demean our officers and our public law, our, our public safety uh, officials like some of the folks up here did tonight. I think it's disgraceful. The reason why I'm running for the city of Huntland Beach is I love this city. Years ago when I saw an issue in our community, I decided to do something about it. Over 16 years ago, we started an organization called Colette's Children's Home. From the tailgate of a pickup truck, we started an organization to take homeless women and children off the streets. I'm proud to tell you, this year we will be celebrating taking over 3,000 homeless women and children off the streets. And we're not a handout, we're a hand up. I can also share with you that we've helped several hundred women attain and retain employment. I've served my community as a public works commissioner. I was the vice chair and the acting co-chair, and I want to thank the, the former city council person up here for nominating me to that position. I've also been a member of the Chamber of Commerce, and I continue, I continue to be a member of that chamber. I'm very active in our Kiwanis Club in our city. I've been a member of the Prop 63 Steering Committee. We've created an organization that has brought over $20 million into Orange County. These are some of the things that I have done. Why I am running for city council is number one. I believe public safety is very important in our community. I've been a victim of crime in our city. It's not a pleasant feeling to wake up at two o'clock in the morning and have somebody standing over you in your bedroom. I think it's very important that we have quick police response. Number two, I think business is very, very important in our community. We have to promote business, encourage business, reduce the red tape, reduce the permit process, and we also have to protect the existing businesses in our community. I'm very, very big supporter of businesses because we need revenue in our city treasurer and small businesses and the businesses that conduct in our city are the backbone of that. Now you heard some things tonight about a $15 trillion deficit in our city. That is incorrect. I also believe that city government has no place in telling me what I can shop at in the city. They have no business telling us whether it's paper bags or plastic bags. And I think it was wrong for the city council to ban fireworks in our community. That has had a negative impact on our community. It has a, a negative impact on the little social groups, the football groups, the soccer teams, the soccer moms. I have had kids that couldn't afford to, to buy a cheerleading outfit, but when they had the opportunity to sell these fireworks. It's the American dream, you know, 4th of July, July. People have died, given our blood of freedom in this country, and yet government had, comes and tells us that we can't have fireworks and we can't shop at plastic bags. I think it's disgraceful. Um, our infrastructure, we have challenges with our infrastructure. There was a study done several years ago where there was several hundred million dollars that needed to be done in our city. So we have to fix that. And I believe I'm the person that can make that happen. My philosophy is to have a big tent, to be inclusive, a big table where everybody's invited to sit down and talk. The problem that we have today in our community is it's been too divisive. We have the extreme left, the extreme right, and there's no middle ground. And we as the citizens are the ones suffering. That has to stop. And you can make that decision. By being here tonight, you have taken a position that you care about our city. I believe I'm the one that can deliver you to you. I believe I'm the one that will represent you. No special interest will hold me. I will do the right thing for you, the citizens of our city. I would really, really appreciate your support. My name is Billy O'Connell. I'm running for city council. I love this city. I love you. 
and I would be more than glad to sit down and talk to anybody that wants to make a better difference for our community. Thank you so much for coming, and I'd be more than glad to talk. That went well, Michael. How'd that go? Except somebody was nervous back in the corner there all night long. I think we did pretty good, folks. This was excellent. excellent. First, we want to thank all the candidates for coming here tonight. Thank you all very much. Thank you. And thanks again to Old World for providing the room for us. They're very generous. They've been a patron. They've been here. Uh, hosting me, I think since I was an uh, underage drinker here, for, but let's not talk about that. Um, <laughs> so we want to make another plea to you, please join the forum. Join and join the conversation, talk with us, uh, bring these issues up, give these fine folks who are so uh, you know, strong to come up here and talk with us, give them uh, things that are important to you so that they can take that into their races and bring it to the wider public. Because we all need to have more dialogue about these things. So uh, they are going to be here for a while to chat with us, but we would like to commemorate this event with a picture with them. So as many of you who would like to come up, we'd like to get some folks behind here and take a picture. So we'd love to have as many of you come up, and because this is going to be on our forum, uh, the legendary uh, picture of the first uh, debate. So come on up for those to take a picture. Candidates possibly go up on stage just so that we can see all of you guys up there. If you want to walk up there on the stage ever so delicately, I see all those cords up there. But thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. A couple of things. Um, we will have a, a survey on the forum for you to fill out for our first ever event. It will allow you to um, provide feedback on this event and for our more detailed events coming up. Um, we are planning a bonfire and uh, beach cleanup in a few uh, few weeks, so look out for that. And we're also looking forward towards, um, as we get closer to election time, if everyone wants to fill in as much as possible, um, we're looking forward to uh, giving that to you guys as soon as we can develop. So thank you so much for coming, and if you want to come up here and get a picture for our first event, that would be so great. <laughs> Just fill in as much as possible. Well, I just got a number. We have 82 people that showed up for this event. And thank you so much. That is absolutely amazing for me that we put together so quickly. Yeah, if you want to sit down, sit down. You go, you go. Look at your picture. Go, go. Everybody up here that wants to be up here? Perfect. Hold on just a minute.